Hey, so just a very quick overview of how I went about doing my curved ramps in AutoCAD. This is my ramp design. Yep. So I'll just do a quick example. So I would I drew the whole thing initially with splines because I liked how the splines would gave that sort of organic curvature. And then I would trace over it with your the um, normal lines or the arc segments to neaten it up and make it user friendly for 3ds max so let's just do a rough example uh, so I might trace a portion here something like that move that over and then, so I wanted just a, a different sort of shape. And you always start off with the inner side of the curve because that, you need to make sure that meets the requirement, meets the minimum required length to have it um, at 1 to 14. So here's our two things, splines, get a different layer going probably, and I'll just trace over it with an arc tool, make sure it's the three point arc. And splines always have a midpoint, so you just find the midpoint and then the end point. Just like that, happy days. And you'll see that it's not spot on. Uh, I told myself that it was the arc just smoothened out any of the wonkiness. Um, but if, say, this is a bit too um, stretched out, you might have to maybe shorten the spline. So make a spline here, make an arc, and then make another spline here and make another arc. Uh, yeah, just have some fun with it. I, I'm just going to say I'm happy with that actual curve. And turn my splines off. So now we've got our two arcs. And now what I would do is I'd make sure, so sometimes I drew out a, a shape for one ramp segment or sometimes I drew it out for a whole portion and then broke the shape down into its respective ramp and landings. Um, I would use the lengthen tool a lot. So you can measure it, it tells you here, this one's 29 meters. So say, I just want to make sure that it's at least um, 1 to 14, so if we're going up 1 meter in elevation, I need to make sure that we've got two ramp segments creating a total length of 14 meters and two landing segments total length of 3 meters, I'm presuming it's 1.5 meter landings, so total of 3 meters. So you'd need a minimum total of 14 and th um, 17 meters. And if there's extra, like say for me 29, I can shorten it if I want, if I want to cut down a bit or I can leave it as is um, and just split the um, extra length equally amongst the ramps and the landings. And I used Excel a lot just to play around with the calculations and whatnot. So I might just actually shorten this to make it the minimum, 17. Uh, so I'll go lengthen total 17,000 or 17 meters. And you can choose what's what sort of part of it you'd like to keep. Let's just go this one, this side. So now I know within this I can have two ramps and two landings. So to do that, I would copy. Oops. And you make a few copies. This is sort of the template, and now you can copy that and break it down. And um, so I'll put this maybe on a different. I made a ramp segments layer, which proved to be handy and I made a landings segments layer as well. So now to make one 
ramp segment, I would go lengthen total 7,000 or 7 meters. Shorten it on this side. So I know, so that now corresponds to the ramp segment along this line. And then this is where it starts getting a bit mathsy. Um, and I just used Excel a lot to automate the calculations. Uh, so f like for this one, I'd need, uh, the way I went about it, I'm sure there's probably better ways to do it, but I just did total. I know that there's already seven meters taken up by this ramp and I need another 1.5 meters for the landing. So I'll do a total of 8.5 meters or 8,500. Shorten it on this side. And then I would length, do the length until again, total, and I'll do 1.5 meters and shorten it on this side. So that gets rid of that ramp segment and we're just left with the landing portion. There we go. So that's one landing and one ramp, uh, one ramp and one landing, I should say. Now I might copy this template a couple more times to get the rest of it. Go ramp again. Landing. Now we're at 8,500. So I know. I need 8,500 plus another 7,000. It's going to really test me on the spot with how quick I am. <laughs> so 15,500 total. So 15,500. There we go. And now I want to um, subtract this part of it. So I know this is 8,500 and I would go lengthen again, total, and just do 7,000 for this part of the ramp. Nice. And then it's a bit tedious, but you get in the zone, just smash out like 20 minutes here and there and take a little break and then do a bit more. It worked for me. <laughs> um, so total. So I'll do, oh, and this one is easy. I can just do 1500 because it's at the end of the line. So I can just shorten it here. And that's my landing segment here. There we go. And now we can connect the two. So now we've got two ramps and two landings that represent the shape that we initially drew. So I'll do one, I'll just quickly do it for this one as well. Uh, I'll check the initial length. Oh, sorry, lengthen. So the length is roughly 11 meters. I know I just need seven meters plus 1.5 meters on each end. If this is just gonna be a joiner. So 10 meters minimum. So I either could just make this maybe more of a nice round number, like 11 meters. I could make a seven meter ramp and then um, two meter landings on each side, or I could shorten this to 10 meters and just do the standard seven meter ramp, 1.5 meter landings on each side. I could, you just figure out how you just, yeah, sort of force it <laughs> into what you want it to be. Uh, let's just say, or there could be half landings because it's a joiner. So you might want to, you might want 750 centimeters of landing on this side and then 750 centimeters of landing on that side. It's really just, yeah, depend. I didn't really figure it out, figure out like a concrete system. Just been playing around with it. So let's just say I want to make this one seven meter landing, um, one seven meter ramp, sorry, and two 1.5 meter landings on each side. So I'll shorten this total. I might do so 10,000. There we go. 
I'll shorten it on this end just because maybe I don't like this part of it. <laughs> and now make some copies again. I'll do three because I know I need one ramp and two landings. Ramp. Landings. So, um, with this ramp, we know it's in the middle of the line. It's, it's in between two landing portions. So, this is where I would go lengthen total, and I would do 10 meters minus 1.5 to get rid of this landing. So, I'll go 8,500, and it would remove that landing portion and then I'd have to go again and just do 7,000 and shorten it on this side. So now we've got that ramp segment in the middle. And now these ones are a bit easier because they're at the ends. So you go total, there's a 500, go that side and go that side. Connect the, connect it all. Happy days. So now we've got some nice, um, nice whatever, nice shapes, and, and we've got the um, ramp and landing segments done. So now, if we were to try and connect these two, say we wanted these were going to be joining together, move this over. And you can see that it's sort of looking a bit funky with this kink. Um, so the way, so if we were happy with the lengths and you fixed all this up first, and then all you'd have to do to fix this is um, offset it, all of it. So I might, I might just group these so I don't have to offset every single component. So offset, let's just say two meters. Oh, that didn't really work, did it? <laughs> I thought the grouping would help, but anyways. Alright, so once you've offsetted, make sure you don't muck around with the offset lengths because that ensures that it's perpendicular with the inner line segment that we drew. So as you can see, every one of these have to be um, perpendicular for the landing interfaces. Uh, so yep. So what I would do now is just rotate the thing. Ah, so now it's grouped. Rotate, click the endpoint here. And then you type in R for reference angle, you click the, that same endpoint again, and you click the opposite endpoint. And you would connect the two. And it's a bit more seamless, as you can see, but the thing is, it changed the direction of where the ramp was going. So this is where a lot of experimenting comes into play. You, you could, instead of rotating this one, you could rotate that one. Uh, you could short Oh, you can't really shorten it. You could um, shorten this one. So you could maybe get rid of this ramp portion and connect this one to here so it's not as much of a sharp turn. Uh, it's really, yeah, you just got to have some fun with it. Uh, you could, if you like this general shape, but you want it, you don't want such a um, sharp turn, you can maybe do another spline and redraw and maybe go, oh, I might do that again. Um, you could sort of go m more over this direction and just go again with the arc. There's lots of options. Um, and don't be too daunted by it. I was initially, but once you sort of get in the groove, it's all cool. And yeah, I think it's worth it if you're set on having like a curved or rounded design, 
I, I sort of like the idea of it, so I was happy that I went through with it. It was a little bit of extra work, um, but worth it. Hey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope that was more helpful rather than confusing, but see. Cheers.